In a world that can be challenging, and at times unpredictable, it's hard to find moments to focus on what you need. Join Stephanie James on The Spark as she guides you to use your inner flame to ignite your best life. As a best-selling author, psychotherapist, transformational life coach, and international show host, Stephanie is dedicated to helping you create a life that takes you, your goals, and your passions to the next level, so you can live a life that is fully lit up and fully alive. She believes that your life is meant to be a beautiful expression of the things that light you up, that by living your dreams, you give permission to others to do the same. Are you ready to feel alive and inspired to fuel your dreams and put a fire behind your desires? Let's ignite a spark in one another that will illuminate the world. The Spark with your host, Stephanie James, starts now. Welcome to The Spark. I'm your host, Stephanie James. I am so excited to have Stacey Perry with me tonight. Oh my goodness, relationship expert. You have so many, I mean, I just loved the first time I met you. And Me too. yeah, just uh, talk about sparks. And I just, I can't wait to talk to you tonight. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you got to this point, being this relationship expert. So I think like in college, if I knew you could be a coach, I would have been a coach and I didn't, or like, I didn't think it was accessible to me or that I can make a living off of it. And then, uh, when I, right before my 40th birthday, a couple months before my 40th birthday, when I broke up amicable to break up with, uh, my boyfriend, we were dating for about four years and it was around Halloween. I remember going home and sitting in my mom's bed and like crying my eyes out to see like, I am ready to freaking love and be loved. Like, just like, I'm so ready. And I had always like dated organically and met people and stuff like that. I'm like, I went all in on dating online, never been online before all on dating, did it for like, from like for four years, from like 40 to 44. I met my husband like a month before my 44th birthday. And then I met him and I adored him and I just had this pit in my stomach. I'm like, I have to finally go after the school of being a coach. And so did that on a couple different, I first studied to be a corporate coach. And then I decided to, I learned about Brooke Castillo and the life coach school. And then I went that route and I like that she trained entrepreneurs and then just, um, her advice is for a niche. And I'm just like, I want to take the pain and suffering, the unnecessary pain and suffering out of dating. Like there's just so much of it. And I think a lot of people don't go into it because they're so scared of it. And that they add a lot of unnecessary stuff on top of it. So like, I wanted to relieve that. Yes. So oh just my God. passionate about it. Yes. I love it. And you know, so that four years when you were just dating, mm -hmm. you've dated more than a few people. That's true. I didn't, I didn't mention that. That's my crazy story is that I went on three dates a week. So I went on 475 dates and my I husband love that. was married. He met his wife, his ex-wife in um, college. They were together five years and then married for 25 years so I was his, his friend put him on Bumble. I was his first online date. He had dated a little bit after the divorce and stuff like that. But I was like, we got here very differently. <laughs> oh my gosh. But talk about serendipity. I mean, I love yeah. that. That is so funny because my husband always says serendipity and I'll be like, it was hard work, mister. <laughs> But then, listen, listen, <laughs> but it is so funny. Cause, and then I remember the beginning, I'm like, first date, you know, this is, mm. and then I'm like, wait, I had been kissing on bar stools and, and meeting meet people and having this great old time. And he'd been going through this, like, like ending of a relationship, which is really hard. So I'm like, actually, I'm like, I, I had more fun the four years than you did, mister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Well, and, and so I love that you followed your passion. I love that yeah. you're helping people with relationships and dating and it mm -hmm. is intimidating. You know, I, I may have shared with you on our first conversation. I mean, after 16 years of being off the market a decade ago, I started dating again. Mm -hmm. And that was I like, it was so different than how it was done before. Cause like you, it was all organic and it was so, mm -hmm. you know, like I just always felt like it fell into place. And all of a sudden it was like, Oh my God, this online dating thing, a whole new world. I don't know if mm -hmm. I can do it. 
And so I'm just curious, how do you take some of the fear out of dating? I'm really wanting to hear. Yeah. So so many, so many ways. I think um, there, I'm I'm gonna go, you said the word fear, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, go after like uh, like the pain and suffering out of dating, let's say it that way. So like I think a lot of people get like mad at the app. Like, I just want to meet somebody organically. Like I want to meet somebody playing volleyball. I want to, and I'm like, go do that. Like, absolutely go do that. 30 as of a study by a Stanford sociologist, like in 2019, 39% of people are meeting their people through online. And it's just like, we have evolved as a society that we have a computer in our pocket now. And before we had to rely on our family, our friends, our workplace, our, our, where we lived, like, you know, our, you married someone that lived within like a mile of you usually, you know, like yeah. statistically. And now we have access to, and like, we think about it, it's bad almost that we have the online dating, but really you're, you have so much access to so many more people than you ever would before. I would have met my husband. Yeah. And I went on 475 dates in four years. Most of them were just like nice people that either they didn't like me or I didn't like them. Do I have some crazy stories? Yes. But like, just to like, this is a great tool. We don't have to get mad at it. Are there people in that tool in that pool that you don't want in with you? Yes. And I think people get so mad. Like, where is the 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 dating site that just has the people I want on it, you know, but it's like, <laughs> we're all in it and don't get mad that other people are using this tool too. So I think managing your mind and having, a, we talked before, like the mindset of not hating on the apps, not hating on dating. Like there's a lot of unnecessary pain and suffering because they're just like, it should be different. <laughs> Yeah. People shouldn't text, you know, message me at three in the morning, wanted to hook up. People shouldn't like, depending on what you want, you know, but like, um, that it should be different than it is. And I'm like, it's just a tool. It's a hammer. It's a screwdriver. It's a nail. It, it is like, if we can like take the energy, we make, we put so much meaning to it. We have stories around it. So that's like one of them. Um, I think a lot of unnecessary pain and suffering comes from my clients that are like, I have to look a different way. I should be like a different age, a different weight, a different this in order to be loved. And so like getting like a different mindset and a different way of thinking around that, we're all just lovable. Um, some people are just like, if someone else has love, it sucks the air out of the universe. <laughs> Like there's not enough for all of us. There isn't. It's a pie. And if somebody has a piece of it, that's one less piece of pie. (laughs) And to realize like, like we create the feelings of love in us. So like, it's uh, that it's like just beyond infinite. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think. And then there is some, like, let's say like, there is some like, rejection can hurt like processing those feelings uh you like somebody it doesn't work out they go out with somebody else means we don't have to make it mean that our city sucks for dating that there's nobody out there for us that we're never going to find love that we're unlovable that we are like have this special kind of messed up that makes us you know like we have so many stories and we are all human and all of us have some of that story and i think and the other thing i'd like to say is like I see dating as any other goal. And I'm sure with you, like when you start your podcast, when you start your coaching business, when when anything, our brain is like, don't do it. (laughs) This sounds terrible. (laughs) (laughs) That's an awful idea. (laughs) We're going to get hurt or bummed or fail or whatever. So it's, it's um, having them see it as any other goal. Well, yeah, it's because our mind, when something is unknown, it automatically goes to that. It's, it's unfamiliar. We're like, oh my God, you know, the fight or flight kicks in. Our negative, yeah. our negativity bias is like, oh, that, that sounds dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so th- I'm hearing, I mean, there's such a mental piece around this that's really important. And the other piece that you're talking about that I've heard a couple of times is this thing of like loving yourself and learning how to do that. 
And so I'm curious for you, was that part of your journey that four years and all those dates is learning how to love yourself more deeply? Or did you already have that relationship with you? I'm a human. I take myself down just like the next person, no matter what. Um, I thought I, you know, was too fat, too old, uh, didn't have, I live in San Francisco where everybody has like a zillion dollars in their bank. I didn't have, I'm not a good enough saver. I didn't have enough bank. My job wasn't sexy enough. I'm not smart enough. Like I, my brain would take me down like that, like constantly. Mm -hmm. And I had evidence of like, I have good relationships with friends and I've had really like, so I could look at other evidence. I think and I definitely had the thing, like, I'm a big personality, like, that I might be just too much. Mm. And, and then, oh, the other thing that I think is so interesting in dating so much is, like, I'm bossy. I uh, like to make plans and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, I'm not feminine enough. Huh. That was a big thing. Because a lot, I think, of like, stuff is, like, oh, be more feminine, like, the lean back. And I'm like... I don't want to be back so much. <laughs> yeah. I want to make a plan. And <laughs> Heck yes. Be your authentic self. Yeah. So I think huh? like, I think, yeah. So I think there's some different messaging and stuff like that. What was the original question? Cause I feel like I just, well, it was about understand. loving yourself and did, okay, did so, that journey dating all those people during that time. Were you also growing more in love with yourself or had you already really been on that journey or what was that like for you? It's very interesting. The relationship I had before my husband, Greg, I remember I'd wanted a boyfriend so badly and I, and I, I got him. And I remember being up in Tahoe with my friend, Lisa. And I was like, shoot, um, I thought this would make me drink less, spend less money, eat less. Like I thought it would cure all my buffering and ways of escaping. And I just going to wake up and be like, Oh, boyfriend, so everything's perfect now. And I, and I had that realization then like, Ooh, I'm still going to be me. No matter what. So I had that before, epiphany before my husband. And then I think what I learned, I had never, I don't think, gone all in the way I did with dating on any goal to that point. And I think I really learned how resilient I was and that I could like fall and like I had a joke because I'd be like, I'd be like, I feel like I'm the bell of the ball. I'd have like three suitors. I'd be like, oh my gosh, everything's so amazing. And then it'd be like, I'd wake up and I was like on the sidewalk with like no teeth. And I'm like, my village got pillaged and like everybody was gone. Like <laughs> so, so many times that happened so many times. I was just like, you know, skipping along thinking like, Ooh, maybe I don't want to get married. Maybe I just want like five boyfriends, which is I'm open to that for anybody. But, and then like, they'd all go away and I'd be like, Hmm. All by myself. <laughs> I love that. So I think I really learned A, that I was resilient and B, like when I met my husband, I had this pit in my stomach being like, I have to go after this coaching thing. And so when, and so I've gone out after the same resilience, like when I literally, when I started dating, I'm like, if it takes me till I'm 86, I'm going to figure this out. And now I'm going, I feel like I need to go after every goal I have that way. Just like, and I think that's what we're talking about, like self-love. And I'd also say like it's self-acceptance and um, knowing and trusting that I will figure it out. And that might have failures and like figuring out and I have to learn things and unlearn things. So it's like part of that self-love I'd love just to say is like trusting myself that I can figure anything out. Mm -hmm. on the road to any goal. Love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, that's interesting because it, it is talk about, it's like growing resiliency, cultivating some grit through this process and knowing that yeah. actually you can really rely on yourself in the end. Yeah. Like yeah. to get you through whatever challenges that you may face. I mean, what a, what a cool experience. And I love that you just went for it and you were just like, <laughs> bring them on Spaghetti on the wall. Like that's not what I totally like coach on, but I'm just like, let's try it. Let's see. <laughs> well, and so, yeah. And, and I guess I want to talk to you about this more when we come back from break. And I, okay. I guess I want to know when, when you walked in and, and saw George, did you know on that date, it was different than others? Do you want to answer that right now? Well, wow. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You got two minutes. 
Okay, so it's Greg and oh, I me, walked, Greg. he walked, I got there first and I was at my, like a, a bar that I is in my neighborhood, which I usually didn't date at bars in my neighborhood. And I went to the bartender. I'm like, you're going to see me on a first date. So you just <laughs> hang on there. And he walked in and the minute he walked in, I was like, mm, maybe a little conservative to dad for me. <laughs> and then he sat down within minutes like he has the most contagious laugh and he's funny and he's open-minded and like within a minute I'm like oh my god I adore him and literally by the end of the date I was just like this is my person mm. and I told my dad that like a couple dates in I was on the phone with him and he has a dog that he throws like a bumper to he's like I gotta go like he's like you're great <laughs> I'm like I know I love love but I've never said this before he's the one so I knew with him like, and it could have been that he didn't like me the same way, but mm -hmm. I definitely felt that way. That is awesome. Really fast. So when, when you're coaching with people, I'm curious, I mean, do you tell them, listen to your guts, listen to your instincts, or do you say, give it time? It'll reveal itself. It depends on the person. Okay. It's getting them aligned with themselves and aware with their patterns and them and their values and like what they want in a partner. So somebody might have a history of what they would say is like just jumping into it. And when I, and there's nothing wrong with jumping into it, but if they're jumping into it because they're scared or scarcity or like, what's the vibration and the motivation behind that, like getting them aware around that. So it depends on the person and like the, the, the question would be like, like when to have sex, there's no rule. Do you use sex to keep someone hooked in to try to like manipulate and control them? Are you doing it? Cause you just want to enjoy that experience with this human being. If you have sex with them and then the next day or the next week or the month, next month, it doesn't work out. Are you going to use that against yourself? So like, that's the, the that's how you make the, the decision. I think that's with everything. It's like, what is your pattern? And you even used the word familiar before. Like I say, like sometimes people's familiarity is not good for them. It might be see, seeing the pattern of their parents or patterns of old relationships. And sometimes familiar is a positive thing. So it's like getting them aware of like what's behind their actions. Is it fear? Is it like excitement? Is it scarcity? Is it love? Is it controlling? Is it perfectionism? Is it people pleasing? Like getting them aware of that stuff. Awesome. Cannot wait to talk to you more about this. When we come back, join us as I'm talking to relationship expert and relationship coach, Stacy Perry. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Spark. I'm Stephanie James here with Stacey Perry, and we're having such an awesome conversation about dating and relationships. And I just want to say she actually is a dating coach, uh, not a relationship coach, but she definitely knows a lot about dating and relationships. She's had some amazing ones. And from dating, how many dates was it? 476? That's five. 75. <laughs> In four years. I mean, talk about guts. So, so what relationship advice would you give someone? Let's say like in, in the situation that I had now I'm in this beautiful, amazing, committed relationship. We've been together for a couple of years. And what would you tell someone like me at one point that comes out of, let's say a marriage or a long-term relationship, and they're looking to get back into dating? What would you tell them? Like we said before, like it, it's specific to the person. It would be like, get clear on like what you liked from your past relationship, what you want to like, recreate and like what you really like don't want again and it's kind of like making promises to yourself like if i see these signs or whatever like i'm not going for before i get attached like and like you might have had values like 
raising kids and having kids in the first marriage. And like the next one might have more play and spontaneity or maybe more time together or less time together. So like really get clear on like, this is a new chapter in your life. This is a new relationship and you get to like create it as juicy and wonderful and exciting as you want. And so like really get clear on what you want to create and what you want to draw in. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like I'm I'm hearing this almost like it's writing like a catalog order to the universe. Yeah right? Like these are the things that are important to me. These are the things that I want. And so would part of that also then be Stacy, like not settling? So I think it's so interesting. I like, I know the settling and stuff like that. I think if you're going to have your catalog order and there are going to be things like I would get really clear on your must haves and nice to haves. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't even know if I'd like the word settle. Yeah. 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 Tell me more. Cause I just think it's like, if you are super aligned with who, who you want to be dating, who you want to be in a relationship in your next relationship and like, what is the deal breakers for you and like must have. And I think you'll, and I, and I almost like, I think sometimes it's like, you might put something that I would be for your deal breakers. It's almost like setting a, so a deal breaker is setting a boundary with yourself. Yeah. And so I would be like, deal breakers have to be deal breakers. Mm -hmm. My husband chews tobacco. That would, I would, I wouldn't even have put it on it because I didn't know anybody that's chewed tobacco. So gross. Yeah. Yeah. And if someone probably asked me the deal breaker, oh, smoking was definitely a deal breaker for me because I hate the smell, mm-hmm. but like, I am perfectly amazingly happy with my chewer, which is such a gross habit, but for someone else that might be a hundred percent deal breaker, but I would just be like, your deal breakers are boundaries with yourself. So like make like, that should be a, like a very tight list. That you, because mm-hmm. when you set a boundary and you say no to someone that's hot, sexy, successful, good on the street, you like them so much. But you have this, like, then it may, like, some people have deal breakers about the age of kids or relationship with an ex, or it could be faith based, like, all the different things. Like, really, really get clear on that for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. It feels like that too, like making that contract with yourself, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's like, mm-hmm. to me, that sounds very self-loving, like yeah. you're cultivating that loving relationship with yourself where you can like actually trust yourself. Like, yeah, I'm going to hold this boundary. If I made this a deal breaker, I'm going to hold it as a deal breaker. Yeah. So make it one that really, really means something to you. Yeah. Yeah. Six foot tall or over is not a, it's not a, a boundary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an interesting condition. <laughs> yes. So, so you advise people to, it sounds like part of it is as, as they're, what they learn about are, these are what my boundaries are. These are my deal breakers and these are my must haves, mm-hmm. like the essential pieces. Mm-hmm. And so as people start defining that, what what's next? So they define kind of what those things look like. And then we'll play with that because I'll do some pushback with it. I'm like, well, what if? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what would be like, yeah, like we we play with them to kind of see if there's lead, we're like, you know, I just like, what if they showed up this way? Like, would you be a little okay with that? So to get them like see where they have flex or see how convicted they are about, you know about it. Um, and then what, what's next? And it may, it, it, depending on the person, it may go in different sequence, but, um, really getting aware about the unnecessary pain and suffering they're causing themselves. Like, let's say ghosters. I mean, ghosters are like, you shouldn't ghost. It's so mean to ghost. All the things agreed. If we were in a court of law, we'd all be like, yes, guilty ghoster. (laughs) And they exist. And we don't have to make their ghosting mean anything about us, mean anything about like, 
my clients would be like, well, what was in my profile? Or what was it in this thing? Or what was it this? And they thought they could just ghost me or blah, blah. it's like that person doesn't like the uncomfortableness of having a conversation. And so they go away or that person thinks it's kinder to just go away than to tell you that you're not their person. It could be, it could be a, a million different reasons, but like people are going to show up the way they show up and choose to show up or have the ability to show up. And that means nothing about us. It means everything about them. So that's a big, big, big one. Yeah. I mean, that, that just reminds me of Don Miguel Ruiz's book, the four agreements, yeah. and one of them being take nothing personally. And it's hard when we're dating. Cause I mean, talk about vulnerability, right? We're putting ourselves out there and people are just like, okay, here's me, pick me um, maybe. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so feeling like you were saying earlier, that sense of rejection and having to process through it. And maybe that's, yeah, that's that important piece of, I can process the rejection without owning it, owning the reason this person ghosted or whatever. hundred percent. And we cannot make it mean anything about our future, about our lovability, about the good guys being out there, because there could be a million ghosters and your person is still out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's such an important message. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what do you find, you know, I mean, you, you touched on this a little bit in the first segment. What are some of the questions that people come to you with? Because I'm hearing it around like, is it okay to have sex on the first date? Should I, you know, uh, you know, intimacy and how many guys can I date or how many girls can I date and what that looks like? And yeah, what is your take on that? Whatever it's what they want to do. It's what they like that they it's almost like setting up their dating protocol protocol. So they don't have to think about it. Like um, and it, again, like we were saying with sex, it's like, well, do you jump into sex in order to get them to like you or to get control or something like that? Because some let's do that, like, you know, like ooh, they wow them with that, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh It's that, it, it, and I, cause I don't know what's best for them. There's not one way of dating. That's, that's like, here's, here's this plan. Here's what I did. And I'm like, and I always thought this is so funny. Cause I'm like, I'm like oh, no one's going to want to coach with me. I want a 475 dates. Nobody wants that program. <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, they get to set up how they want to date, how they want to show up, uh, their rules for engagement. They, they get to make their own rule book. And that brings up something that um, pain and suffering we have, and with ghosters and stuff like that, we have a rule book. We all have a manual and a rule book for everybody in our life. I have a manual and rule book for you right now of how you should run this podcast. We have one, how people should show up for dating. They should ghost. They shouldn't ghost. Uh, they, can lie on the profiles about their age as long as they say it in their bio. Like we have, we all have what's right and wrong, what's good and bad, you know, all those things. People are going to show up the way they show up anyways. And us sitting there and judging them and get angry about it and getting mad that they're showing up in this way. It's just a waste of our energy because they're going to show up. Adults are going to show up how adults show up. So yeah. we can let go of that and just be like, sit back, have some popcorn and watch the movie that is this person that is interacting with us at this moment. And just be like, this is the movie of them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. It's a practice. It's, it is like, I'm not, like, we're not robots. We have feelings. We need to learn to process those feelings and not add on extra stuff on top of it. Well, and I wonder too, Stacey, when you were having three dates a week, did that help with that kind of sense of like, I don't have to worry about being too attached. I don't have to worry about, you know, I, I was that easier then for you to kind of step back and, and just watch the movie of this person that way? That's me dating coach, Stacey. I ran super anxious. It wasn't the train coach at that time. So I was just like, ah, pick me, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, I think it's funny. Like I joke. Cause I'm like, if someone met me and I wasn't into them, they'd think I was like calm as a cucumber. And then if I wasn't, I'd be like, Oh, I was like so anxious. Like, yeah. uh, yeah. so 
And I read the book attached between my ex and then dating. So I knew it. And I almost, and then like my brain would be like, oh, you are messed up. You have the bad attachment style. And like, and also like I would be swiping and I'd be like, ooh. And like, I knew that I would be drawn to the, um, avoidant type and like and i i'm gonna say douchebag which i don't even like that word because i feel like i treated myself like a douchebag people didn't treat me like one mm-hmm. hey, but i'd be like oh just one more he looks kind of <laughs> avoidant just one more <laughs> it's like oh just come on it's like candy or like a treat or i mean <laughs> yeah. i don't know when i knew it wasn't good for me so, and then yeah so you had to become aware of your own patterns exactly right and is that part of what you help people realize is like, yeah. this is part of yeah. like, and listen, just, you're a coach. I'm a coach. You know, that someone could not be a coach and kind of tell you your product. It's so much easier for another brain to tell you your thinking, you know, it's so much easier. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like my, like it's so, and it's complimenting and funny. It's like my, Oh my God, I didn't even see that. Like my clients are like, how did you not see that one? <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah. So you're just, uh, we're, we're like sitting on the couch together. We put the brain on the coffee table. And we're like, mm, let's look, look at that. Look at those thoughts. Like, that's so interesting. Like, look at that one. Non-judgmental. Mm-hmm. There's no good or bad thoughts. It's like, what do you want to keep? What do you not want to keep? Like now that you are aware of this, what's serving you to move you forward toward your goal of love? What's blocking you? Um, some of them are really hard to let go of, even though they're blocking them. And then we work on that and they don't have to let go of anything that they don't want to. It's, yeah. it's, it's their, it's their business. Well, and I love that. It's like looking at what doesn't serve. Yeah. You know, that it doesn't have to be what doesn't or does serve someone else. It's like, as you said, to the individual, Yeah. you know, for you, if this is a pattern that's running for you and this doesn't serve you, how do you want to think differently? How do you want to show up differently? Yeah. And people don't know that we can write, rewrite our paths too. Like we just have a, a bunch of thoughts that we have told a story about our past that like we can rewrite our past in our favor to make love more possible for us. I love that. Talk more about that. Cause I think people think, Oh my God, it's set in stone. This is how I've been. This is who I am. Yeah. You know, like, like, like I am yeah. this person, this is yeah. me in love or me in dating. Exactly. Like they're like, if I ask them, who are you in love and dating? They, their head goes towards the past and they'll, tell me about their relationships and everything that happened until now, rather than like, they could go to the future and be like, this is what I want to be in the future. And then in the past too, it's like writing that. And then like, there are some data points that are truth. They're like in a court of law at age 16, you dated a person, they had brown hair, you know, you broke up on this date rather than like, they were a jerk. And I treated myself awfully in that like you, you don't you can just be like that was learning everything has been cons- the universe could be a, that could have been all perfect and it could be conspiring and it's gonna make it all perfect like when you're with your person like right before I met Greg like there was this hot sexy fireman that I went on three dates with that you know didn't ask me out again and so I was like oh he like and so I was like switch 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 like and I met Greg and at the time I was so sad you know like oh I liked him Mm-hmm. and then like every every relationship i had before like now it all makes perfect sense and i've made it make perfect sense so, so i just put it into order yeah yeah it, yeah when you say you made it make sense like you gave it the significance you wanted it to have yeah yeah and like you can rewrite your story any way you want like i had a conversation with somebody else my parents are happily married my dad is a lovely human being. I use that against me dating. I was like, there's nobody else like them. Oh. Everybody like him got married when they're 21 and want to have kids. And I didn't want to have kids. And like, that's just men of that era. They don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. I made it like, here's this wonderful, positive, lovely thing in my life. I used it against myself. Totally. So it's like, once you become aware of that, and oftentimes Mm -hmm. I'm sure you found this out too, you know, that it's subconscious programming yeah, and these messages that we adopted since we were little. And, and so, yeah, like my dad's a hero. My dad's incredible. No one can love me like my dad. No one can be my dad. And so all these kind of limiting or scarcity mindsets. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like part of what you do is teach people 
like there's abundance, there's rescripting. Mm -hmm. You don't have to experience dating the way that you ever imagined it. Yeah. A big thing I think too is like abandonment. Like as humans, we're all a fear of being abandonment because back when we were like primal cave people, if we got kicked out of a cave, we couldn't survive without our tribe. Yeah, yeah. And we still have that wiring a hundred percent. That's how we're about our primal brain. And so when someone doesn't want to date us, our brain is like, it's life or death. Yeah. Our, our, we get that trauma triggered visceral physical response to it. And it's just not true. We can survive. Mm. And some people have, tr- so that's going on for everybody. Some people have truly been abandoned in their lives. Like when they're children, when they, could be abandoned because like we're adults now, like if someone abandons us, we can still survive as a child. You can't without an adult. Yeah. And so like that really did happen to them. Plus this is how we're wired. And so getting aware of that, but I would say most people, including myself, we abandon ourselves more than anybody else is now. Like our feelings, like um, our dreams. Yeah. Speaking up for ourselves. Like we abandon ourselves way more than anybody else does now. Absolutely. And, and I love that context of realizing like, yeah, I'm, I'm not four, I'm not eight, you know, I'm, I'm, we're grownups. And even if it doesn't feel good, we can deal with the loss or that feeling of abandonment and Mm -hmm. know as adults, yeah, we can deal with this. Mm -hmm. We can take care of ourselves and we can get through it and we can love ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And with compassion, like knowing like that's what, like it could be like you had true abandonment gro- growing up or like just know that like we are wired to fear that and like be compassionate mm-hmm. about it but also like talk to ourselves like we will survive beautiful well we've got to take a quick break and then we'll okay. be back with Woo. dating coach extraordinaire stacy perry so stay tuned Welcome back to The Spark. You're here with me and wonderful Stacy Perry. I wanted to take a moment and just thank all of my listeners. This is actually going to be my last show on Transformation Talk Radio, and I'm going to be moving over to BBS, and I'll be an hour earlier on Wednesday. So I'll be at 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time instead of 7 o'clock. And I hope you'll continue to follow the spark so we can continue to bring you amazing people like Stacy Perry, who helps us learn so much about how we can learn to love ourselves, how we can date fearlessly, get in touch with our patterns and really live our best life. So coming on back, Stacy, I just, I'm so amazed. First of all, I think you're amazingly brave to share your story and amazingly brave to have gone through those four years. What, what for you were, were the big lessons or takeaways from those experiences? I mean, you said, I've got some crazy stories and I've got, you know, I'm sure. Um, what do you feel like helped you that then you became inspired and you're like, I want to help people with this. I love what you just said, right? When you're introduced, you're like to fearlessly date, it's like, to have the fear and date anyways. When you're going after any goal, you're going to have fear. Like it, you're, it's going to be there. You're going to have, we're, we're all, we're not just like 100% confident or 100% unconfident. We're not all 100% fearless or, or uh, uh, there's going to be fears. There's going to be insecurities. We're like a puzzle piece and there's all different little pieces and we all have little nuggets of part of us that are tender ow, and like parts of us that are like, Whoo! chest puffed up like bring it on like we are pieces there's all different pieces and parts of us and dating and buying love brings up a lot of that just like any scary goal for us so it's gonna be there's gonna be scary parts of it there's gonna be vulnerable parts of it there's gonna be uh parts that you know trigger you in different ways and to do it anyways. Just commit to yourself. Like if you really want love, if you really want a, a relationship it, or in whatever style relationship you want, like open to all of them. Uh, 
like part of life is just like seeing what you can make happen for yourself. And I think relationships and connection is such a big part of that. So, uh, I think that was a big thing that I learned that I was resilient, that I could be afraid and scared and sad and all that and go after the goal anyways. Mm. Yeah. What a, what a huge life lesson. So biggest, big. Biggest. Yeah. You know, and, and I know we both experienced this. I'm, I'm imagining, you know, with our clients, our coaching clients where they like do not want to do it and no. you know, their little, little inner rebel, you know, gets in there and it's like, <laughs> no, no. Um, so how do you help someone who you find to be really resistant? Like, of course, I think we have a natural tendency where we're pulled towards community. Like you were just saying, and then our primitive brain is like, I need connection. And that's the truth. We do, we yeah. need connection. Um, and so you tell people, okay, even if you're afraid, do it anyway. How do you, how do you help deal with that inner, I, I call it a rebel, but it's the, the part of us yeah. that holds back. Yeah. And it, and it could be like the scaredy cat. Like, like I have clients that like are really scared to date because of their weight and being like shot down because of their weight. And so let's say somebody like that, I'd be like, make sure your pictures online are a hundred percent new. And cause your person is picking you based on exactly what you look like. Because if you put on, uh, maybe let's say you put pictures that are older, like let's, let's say that you're older or your, your weight or anything like that show who you really are right now. Cause your person's going to pick you based on that. So you're not playing a game in your head when you meet them. And then they are like, oh, you don't look like your pictures. And maybe they don't want you because of that. But it's like, just show them who you are. They pick you. And then you trust that they know what you look like and pick you because of that. So I think that could be like almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a negative way. If you don't put up pictures and really represent yourself online, truthfully. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the question again? Tell me one more time. My brain goes. Like, so j just about when people are resistant. Okay. And then I, I think some other people resist. Um, it's just like the, we like, it's just like any other goal. Like we'd rather sit on our couch, have a glass of wine and watch Netflix. We'd rather go out with our friends. We would rather like pet our dog. <laughs> there are uncomfortable pieces, uncomfortable parts, uncomfortable actions towards any goal, writing a book, right. getting bigger biceps, whatever it is. Um, and that that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to do it. So it's almost like we were talking about relationship to yourself. A big piece of confidence is self-confidence is trusting yourself to do what you you said you do. So like if you make a schedule, like I'm going to swipe for 30 minutes in the morning or in the evening, whatever, and you keep that promise to yourself, you're building your relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. You're building your self-confidence. Yeah. Even though it's uncomfortable and you'd rather go on a walk with friends or whatever it is, if you just do that. And so I try to make it, be like the littlest thing they can do almost so that they'll keep the promise to themselves and then they'll, they'll do it. Um, and then that builds confidence over time. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's such a great strategy so that they have like a, a certain amount of time. Yeah. And then we really, that. yeah. And what we do is let's say they don't do it. We really, what's coming up in their brain? Like what's the pushback? What's, what are they telling themselves? And uh, mostly the reason they won't do that is because they don't believe their person's out there. They don't believe they're lovable. They don't believe they can make it happen for themselves. They don't believe that the relationship that they want is possible. And so that's why they're not doing it. And we really get into that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, what, what are some of your success stories with some of the clients that you've been working with that have overcome that resistance and have really started dating and embracing dating? Yeah. And it's, it, it's my secret is like, I'm a dating coach. I'm really like uh, empowering women to go after their dreams and their goals. So everything they're doing. So it's women who, I mean, I've coached with them for months and then finally they go out and start dating. And so that's their success. Awesome. Uh, women who, um, were like, in so much pain around dating and so angry about dating, like letting go of that. And then they let go of that, like 
in their professional life. They let go of that. They, they, they have been giving everybody else around them the power over their like peace of mind and their, their calmness and to learn to like, let go of that and to date and go after their goal or, and, and, and to stop giving everybody their like peace of mind or their power. Yeah. And, and of course, meeting their person, you know, I uh, like meeting their people, uh, like so many clients, it's, it's being able to like, and this was me too. I feel like all my clients are me, uh, to be able to not be embarrassed about what they want in a relationship and not feel like if they say it, it will scare somebody away. And so to be learning to Mm -hmm. speak up and to, um, be proud of and like not I'm saying I'm gonna say the wrong word like your person wants you and there might be some negotiation on what your relation is gonna look like it's not like you're gonna be like 100% match like you know there's gonna be some conversation around it but like to not be afraid of that conversation and not be afraid of like what you desire yes I love that and I think almost in today's day it's like Yeah, like some of us are embarrassed to like want love and just to admit it to ourselves and to everybody around us that we want love and we want to make a relationship happen for ourselves. For me, like back in the day, it was like that it should, if it doesn't just happen organically, that's being needy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what a, what a cool journey with people, Mm -hmm. you know? I love it. I love it. Cause it's so funny because it helps. Yeah. We're so intimate together. I'm like, you're being hundred percent with me with all your like fears and frustrations and all that. And I'm like, I'm loving on them. I'm like, this is what your person's going to do. You can be messy and imperfect and needy and too much and all the things and be totally loved. And that's, that's, that's what I feel like you're helping to empower yeah. these women to do, you know, is yeah. really embrace their voice, you know, find their voice, embrace it become even more of their authentic self. And then just to bring that to the world, mm-hmm. what a gift. Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> I, I think so too. I love this. So how do people get in touch with you? I'm on Instagram, Stacy Perry coaching.com S T A C Y P is in Peter E R R Y.com. That's my main area. Same. My website's the same Stacy Perry coaching.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, but most of my stuff is on Instagram and, um, in Instagram, or you can email me through my website or Facebook. I will give a free, uh, one hour, like kind of coaching consultation, exploration call. And you kind of see if it's a right fit for you. And if you're curious, ask the questions and see, um, if coaching feels good to you, kind of like a first date and see if we're a match. Mm, love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great though. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. How wonderful. Well, and as we're wrapping up, Stacey, what is the essential message that you want to leave with the audience around dating and, and all this amazing stuff that you do? I would say your person's out there, shine your light bright, like who you are, be who you are so they can find you. If they're looking for a peach and you're saying you're an apple, you know, like, or if you, it's like they're looking for a daisy and you're saying you're, you know, spinach I don't even know really bad analogies <laughs> horrible analogies but like shine your light bright who you are and and tell your truth and speak your mind and be who you are uh so they can find you and I would say that and to get awareness on if you're doing that like from a really like a line level versus like the you have to be somebody to be that or um show up as the true you mm. Yeah. So they can find you. Beautiful. And we're Stacey all messy Perry. and imperfect. We're all messy. Oh my God. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the spark for so fun. igniting all these amazing hearts and thank just, you. just showing up as you. You're amazing. You too, Stephanie. <laughs> well, thank you, girl. Excited to uh, share on and watch your journey. 
And actually, really quickly, I want to thank Transformation Talk Radio and my producer, Jacob, who is a rock star. So thank you so much for this wonderful year together. We'll see you soon on The Spark with Stephanie James. Thanks for tuning in to The Spark with Stephanie James. Remember that you already have what you need to live a life that is fully lit and fully alive. You're already holding the flame. Now it's time to ignite your best life. Learn more at stephaniejames.world. That's stephaniejames.world. And tune in next week at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Shine on!